Hello everyone, my name is Li Hao. So the last time I created this Fibonacci visualization, as you can see on this screen, if you haven't checked that video out, here's the link. So I posted this video on Twitter and the one who originally created that inspired me to doing this, uh, Kirill, retweeted and said that he created this originally using Canvas and request animation frames. He shared me the link to his GitHub. So here is where the magic happens. In this spiral canvas component, he created a canvas and then draw the pattern out. And he used request animation frames. And in each frames, he draw four circles, which leads to that spiral animation. So this code is written in more of an imperative manner rather than declarative. What that means is that on every step, you manually add the circles and then draw it onto the screen rather than declaratively declare that what you should see on the screen and then let Svelte handle the rendering. So what I'm going to do here is to try to refactor my original code to use canvas, but I want to write it more of a declarative manner rather than imperative manner. Uh, do note that I, I don't mean that uh, this code is not good or it's just a different mental model of writing a code itself. So over here, I have my previous code. Again, if you haven't watched my previous video, here is the link. So a brief reminder of what we have done the last time. So here we have motion twin to create a number of circles and we use each block to loop through the number of circles and then draw the circles on the screen. And with the index, we calculate the position of the circle as well as the color of the circle. And now we have the button. Uh, so the button itself will set the twin value to zero if it's more than zero and then set it to maximum, which is 300. So it will set to 300 circles. So it will twin from zero to 300. And then when we click again, it will twin from 300 all the way back to zero. We're going to refactor this and we are going to use canvas instead of SVG. So what we're going to do here is that we are going to rewrite this into something like a canvas rather than SVG. I do know that we don't have the canvas component right now. Um, so this is a component, the canvas component rather than campus, canvas elements. Uh, because um, canvas elements don't take in any uh, child elements. So we can't really uh, manipulate whatever is inside the canvas using Svelte. But this is more of a canvas component. And what I want to write here is that I want to convert uh, the circle to something called a circle component. So I want to have, I want to define or de describe my canvas in, in this manner. So it's still decoratively. But then this canvas component will actually in charge of drawing out the elements inside the canvas. Right. So this pay in mind, this is more of a declarative way of like define, declare what you want to see on the screen. Right. We don't control how, when we add circles, uh, this is all controlled, uh, is all ba defined based on um, the each block. We de declare that, okay, we are going to loop through this and we are going to have this number of circles. We don't declare, we don't define how we are going to add the circles uh, that is handled by uh, Svelte. So now we're going to create these two components. So first is canvas and second one is circle. Right. So how do we get the circle to drawn on the canvas over here? Right. So the trick is here is what we call a renderless components. And this term is actually coined by Stefan Van Rias, if I pronounced his name correctly. Um, he has this block uh, called renderless components in Svelte, which I'll share the link over here. Um, so the idea is that you can actually have a component that renders nothing or renders a minimal of things, right? You can have a component that handles just the logic. And in, in our case, the canvas is actually the component that uh, handles the logic and rendering the, uh, rendering the canvas. 
and the circle component actually renders nothing on the screen, but it tells the canvas what to render and how to render itself. So the idea is, is clear right now and how, and how we link that using slots and context. And we shall see how we're going to use these two concepts in Svelte to achieve that effect. So first thing first is that if you look at here canvas, uh, if you want to render something in, you need a slot, right? So that's simple. And circle itself, as I mentioned, we don't render anything. So it's going to be empty. Uh, it's going to only have a script. Uh, same, same thing goes with canvas. We're going to have a script. And now in the app, um, here it's complaining that canvas and circle is not defined. So we're going to import canvas. and import circle. Sorry. Okay, so the next thing is that I'm going to look at the canvas component. So the canvas component over here will have to render the canvas. So this is the canvas element on the DOM. And I'm going to use bind this canvas. So this gave us a canvas element and we're going to draw in inside this canvas, right? And the slot over here is so that the circle is put in into this canvas, right? If we don't have a slot, then anything here is actually being ignored. So the canvas will never know that there's a circle component render inside the canvas. So over here in the canvas component, what we are going to do is we are going to use on mount so that we can draw something uh, after we get the canvas, right? So con context equals to canvas dot get context to D. And then, so we need to import on mount. And over here, we're going to use a request animation frame. So request animation frame. Sorry, uh, frame ID equals to request animation frame update and return. I have to remember to cancel it. Cancel animation frame. And in the update function, we have update and request another animation frame. So this pattern is the request animation frame pattern. So you request a frame, draw something over here, and then request the next frame and then update uh, repeatedly, right? And when the canvas is unmounted, we are going to clear the frame. So we will gonna cancel anything we are gonna draw. So here the next thing is that how does the canvas knows the circle? Right? How do they how do we establish that connection? And we can do that using context. Uh, so context is a concept where the parent component will provide so so-called a context, which is like a shadow, where it casts a shadow to all the child and grandchildren's and uh, components or elements, and all these components were actually able to get that context from uh, that shadow, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say set context. So set context takes in two parameters. The first one is the name. So I'm going to call it canvas. Uh, it can be any string. Uh, as long as when in a circle, you want to get context, you call with the same identifier. So call set context. And here I'm going to have two function. One is called a register. So it registers, so it provides a context for the circle to register itself. 
and then as that's just unregister. Right. So here I'm gonna keep a reference, a list of reference of uh, components that are gonna be registered. Right. So here I'm gonna say uh, elements, or rather uh, draw functions. So when each of the circle is registering to the canvas, it's actually registering a, a draw function. So that is how the circle describes itself, like how you should draw me. So it passes in a draw function over here and a draw function to unregister. So I'm gonna type in quickly. So to register, you push into this array and to unregister is to remove it from that array. Right. And now when we have this list of functions that we know how to draw, um, in the update function here, um, is nothing but to draw all of them out. Right, so dot for each. And we pass in the context. Right, so we provide the context for the draw function so that you can use this context to draw. But this context is the canvas context, right? It's not the not the spelt context. Okay, so now let's go to the circle component. So in the circle component, first thing is that if you look at in the app.svelte, it takes in four props, right? So we're going to declare that as well. So export r, export let cx, export let cy, export let fill, right? And over here, we need to get the context from the con parent. Right, so we have get context. So canvas equals to get context canvas. Again, this string has to match this string. Right, so once we get the context, pro uh, we actually get the register and the unregister function. Right, so um, we're gonna use on mount again, so that when it mounted, we're gonna register itself, and when it unmounts, we need to unregister. Register. Unregister. Right, and what are we going to register? is the draw function. So over here we have a draw and we're going to register this function. Right. So as you remember just now, uh, previously I mentioned that this draw function will be called with the context, right? So the context will tell you how to draw the circle. So here, we have the draw function and we have like the radius, uh, the X and Y position of the center and the fill. And now it's just to draw that circle out uh, using context. So I'm going to tap it, type it out. So to draw a circle in a canvas would be to start a path and then set a color. And then you draw an arc. So CX, the center position, the radius, um, the angle to draw the arc, and then I'm gonna fill with the color, and that's it, right? And let's see what we get. Right, so um, as you can see here, it does not shrink. And that's because um, on every frame, we keep drawing new circles and we did not clear them. So here on every frame, we need to clear 
Uh, so it starts from zero zero all the way to canvas dot uh, width, canvas dot height. Okay, and let's try again. Right, it works. Right, so again, uh, if you remember the last video, we set we use uh, a transform to shift the position of the circle to the center, right? Uh, by translating a uh, canvas uh, height by two and the canvas width by two. So we're going to do the same thing as well. So we're going to save first before we do any uh, transformation. And once we've done that, we have to remember to restore it. And over here, we're going to do a transformation. So translate canvas.width and canvas.height. Let's try that again. Right, it's perfect. Thing except it's being cut off a bit over here. Um, so we're gonna set some, probably some height or width for the canvas. Um, I can't remember, is it 200 that we set for the SVG previously? Yeah, 200, right? Ah, so this is actually being passed in as the height and width as a props. So we're going to do that as well. So export lab prop uh, height, export lab width, height, width. Try that again. All right, looks perfect. Yep. And we can change the value over here as well. If you we want a different um, frequency. So here we have again uh, a summary. What we have achieved so far is that uh, we've changed from using SVG to Canvas. And instead of writing um, this rendering function declarate, uh, imperatively, um, like instructing how step by step how to add circles, we actually use uh, Svelte's uh, each block to, de to declare how the circle will be drawn on the screen uh, declaratively, right? And to handle that, um, we use something, a concept called a renderless components, which is um, the circle itself is not actually rendering anything on the screen, but actually only contains the logic of how, uh, itself, how the circle itself should be drawn on the screen. And it is going to instruct the canvas to draw it and how the canvas and the circles establish that connection is through a context, right? So using a slot and a context, you can uh, establish like the connection between the parent and children and grandchildren and the grandchildren can con uh, instruct in how the parent should be, rent uh, should be drawn. So, yep, that's about it. So if I made any mistakes or anything that I can improve on, please feel free to comment down below. And if you have anything that you would like to see more in the future, please comment down below as well. And that's all for today. Have a nice day. See you. So thank you for staying till the end. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay notified with my next video, please hit the subscribe button down below. As always, stay safe and well. See you next time.